All right, welcome to another edition of the Hellion Rock. I've got an exciting guest today. This is Hank Three. Hank, how are you doing, man? Ah, uh, doing good, man. It's good to talk to you. Uh, you too. Uh, let's just jump right in it, man. I know you're you're always busy and you always do things over the top. You've got two new records coming out. One's a double disc and the other is a single. Uh, the double disc is Brothers of the Four by Four. Tell us about that record, man. Well, that to me, that's more of a country record. You know, it's got a couple of songs that has the full-on country roots, like um, Deep Scars and Loners for Life. So those two songs are definitely uh, very more traditional. Uh, and then you got a couple of songs that has the bluegrass feel on it, that kind of uh, like uh, Held Up or Look Yonder Coming. And then you got a couple of the boot scooting songs like Hurtin' for Certain. And then there's a, you know, a couple of weird ones like I Ain't Broken Down, I'm Just Broke. It's kind of a spaghetti western meets Pink Floyd kind of song. Um, then you got your uh, old tradition, way traditional song called Possum in a Tree that I officially wrote for Leroy Troy, an old claw hammer banjo player around town. <laughs> Pretty cool. You got a second disc, a fiendish threat. A little more punk, yeah. a little more hardcore, right? Uh, yeah, man, it's a little more hardcore, kind of old school punk rock. I recorded it all on uh, with acoustic um, instruments. So the acoustic guitar had kind of a, a a fuzz distortion on it, and got the stand up bass rocking in there, and then you also got the uh, a banjo making some weird noises every now and then, and the fiddle on some of those tracks, and it's a different singing voice uh, for me as well. So that was always a uh, a, a challenge. So it's been coming across uh, good live, and uh, it's a lot more raw. It's kind of a night and day difference uh, compared yeah. to the uh, production. You know, I record the records, engineer them. I mix them and master them myself, so it's uh, always pretty hands-on uh, with the way I, I do things. That's cool, man. Well, that's one of my favorite things about you is the diversity. I get a kick out of, um, you know, I, I keep your discs in my truck. I got a six-disc changer, and I'll load it up. I got people with me. I'll throw one on, you know, one of your country ones, and then I'll throw one of your rock ones, and it just, it's a, it's a kick in the ass watching people react to your music. Um, how do you attribute your such your eclectic style? Well, I think a lot of it has to do with um, me being a drummer uh, over the years just helped me be very open-minded. And the kind of records I had laying around when I was growing up, you know, I always had Queen or Heart or um, Kiss and Black Sabbath and Waylon and Willie and all kinds of guys, man. So throughout the years... Um, I just really identified with those styles, and, uh, you know, it took me a little bit to find my niche, but I found my groove and found my sound, and uh, I've been uh, lucky enough to have a very diverse uh, audience. It's been there for us for many, many years, and, uh, you know, we always tour to tour as much as we can. This one is just by chance coming out. Uh, the you know, our tour is coming up just around these records, but it's always a uh, it's a challenge every time we do it. Nice. I got to say, I grew up in a household where I listened to your grandpa, I listened to your dad, now I'm listening to you. You know, it's it's, it's an awesome legacy that you know I'm glad to see that you're carrying on. Um, do you have you given any more thoughts or paying any tribute to your dad and your grandpa? Well, you know, that's one of those things. I, I just do it here and there because uh, every time you do that, you just get a lot of negative reactions, uh, more so than positive. Gotcha. <laughs> it's what it seems like. And it goes back to, yeah, a song here and there. But going past that, man, you always get the, well, he's just riding on the coattails. And I've always you know, based all my hard work ethic and everything I, I do to to not have that pinned on me. If you really look at my whole career, uh, you'll notice how I've gone the totally opposite direction right. of that. 
So I, I've never it, thought it's, that it's about one you. of those things. Yeah, I've never thought that about you. You know, I've always uh, you know felt a distinct individuality, but you know, in res- retrospect, I respect the music that they made before you. Um, I'm gonna yeah. be fortunate. Yeah. You're gonna be rolling through maybe, here. Go ahead, man. Go, go ahead. ahead. I was gonna say oh. the closest thing to that might be uh, me working with Wayne the Train Hancock, and that might. Uh, me and him might do a HWWH record, and that'll be like a full-on, more of a purist sound uh, on that. Awesome. You're going to be rolling through here in New Mexico uh, in, in a few weeks. I'm going to be fortunate to check that out. I hear tell that you've got a three-hour set. And it's been like that quite a long time, man. You know, uh, Albuquerque is always a challenge because the voice – you know, we start going up in uh, the altitude just a little bit, um, but we've always played long shows. If we, if it says the show starts at 8 o'clock, it starts at 8 o'clock. So we try to tell people to be on time and um, t- for the ladies to not wear no open-toed uh, shoes so no one steps on their toes with a cowboy boot or a combat boot. And uh, the first hour and a half is the country, and then the uh, hellbilly sound, the punk rock sound, the doom, and then three bar ranch as the, as the night goes on. Awesome. I know you're busy. I've got to, I had a couple of people write me in some questions. I'm going to go ahead and throw out. Uh, Marty wanted to know he loved watching the, the Wild Wonderful Whites of West Virginia. Do you still stay in touch with those people? Uh, whenever we go uh, near West Virginia, Mamie almost always comes out, and I see Jesco every now and then. Um, we definitely miss the Miracle Woman, uh, Birdie May. You know, Birdie since May. she passed on, and uh, you know, definitely miss Hassel Atkins. So um, they are all, uh, you know, they're all like family and very. Uh, and it was an honor to to get to be go to have the invite to go near Boone County, West Virginia, and and to do uh, to record the mountain dancing uh, in a natural fashion up there. Right. Okay, I got Rick Door wanted to know if there were any other tracks that you recorded when you made the Rebel Meets Rebel with the with the David Alto and those guys. No, that was the only only time um, you had time by. Dimebag Daryl and David Allen Coe and Benny Paul on the side of the stage when I was playing. So um, after I got done, we just went over to his house and uh, we had some fun in the studio for a little while. So it was a we definitely miss uh, miss him and uh, yeah, that, that's all that there was, unfortunately. Thanks. Then I got some buddies that are in a band called Scattered Hamlet, and they actually mentioned you in one of the tracks. Uh, the singer, Adam Joe, he wanted to get your opinion on who has the best moonshine, West Virginia or Kentucky. Well, I mean, I would almost say you can't forget about Carolina. So um, Carolina goes very, very deep as well on, on that topic. So I would um, – I, I, I would have to say probably Carolina, man. There you go, third option. Cool. Um, before we get off, I wanted to tell you that, um, you know, predominantly I listen to rock and roll music, but like I said, I grew up in a house with, with old school country, old school country, not the new stuff that's out. One of my favorite tracks that you've ever done is Country Heroes. It just touches me on so many levels, and I want to personally thank you for making that song. Absolutely, man. I mean, that's that's just one of those uh, super, super deep songs. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the one guy, I always, uh, you know, Johnny Paycheck, I didn't get to give him a shout out on that one. But um, Johnny Paycheck was definitely one of my ultimate country heroes as well. So, um, you know, Merle Haggard and David Allen Coe are the last two. Real yep. deals left, man. So it's uh, we always try to pay as much respect to them as we can. Beautiful, Hank. I know you're busy. I'm gonna cut you loose here. I appreciate your time. I look forward to seeing you. Maybe get to shake your hand at the show. And I think I'm gonna well, shoot, shoot some pictures and do a write up of it. And I appreciate you, man. 
Well, usually at, at the Sunshine Theater, because we play so long, um, most of the time I have to do, you know, I'll do the meet and greet a little bit inside, but most of the time we have to take it to the street, and I will be out there and shake every hand and do every picture until everyone is satisfied. All right, look forward to seeing you, Hank. It's, it's, thank you for calling, man. Uh, and if you just keep it uh, in mind, uh, if people want to check out our uh, website to see where else we're playing, just hank3.com, or if people want to um, buy the vinyls, uh, they can uh, purchase those uh, there as well. And because uh, we don't sell the vinyl at the at the, the the shows because they can get damaged, but that's right. a place to uh, keep uh, keep up with us. Good. You got some great gear, great shirts, great accessories. Uh, I highly recommend people get up and support you. And you know, we're me and my listeners have been a long time fans, and uh, I thank you again. All right, man. Much respect. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Right. Okay. Bye. Bye.